This is the Huawei Watch Fit 2, a watch I originally suspected might be difficult for me to recommend given its visual similarities to the much cheaper Huawei Band 7. However, now that I've tested it for a few weeks, I found the Watch Fit 2 is definitely superior to the Band 7, at least in some regards. Still, I do think that for some of you the cheaper Huawei Band 7 is the better choice, while for others spending a bit more money on the higher end Watch Fit 2 is the way to go. In this video, I'll scientifically test the heart rate measurements, sleep tracking, oxygen saturation measurements, GPS tracking and step counting of the Huawei Watch Fit 2. I'll also compare the performance of the Watch Fit 2 to that of other watches to help you decide which watch is the right one for you. Now in previous videos, I've shown that the Huawei Watch ET3 series has some of the best heart rate tracking, if not the best heart rate tracking on Android. This new Huawei Watch Fit 2 has some of the same heart rate sensors as the GT3 series which means it might be a relatively affordable way for you to measure your heart rate. On the other hand, I don't have high hopes for the sleep tracking though, since this historically has not been one of Huawei's strong sites. However, let's find out if this is the case for the Huawei Watch Fit 2. Now as always, I do not want to waste your time, so there are timestamps in the description below and also on the timeline. Hello everyone. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now in my videos, I try to avoid lengthy discussions of the specs, however since this is a relatively new release, I'll try to summarize the 10 most important facts on the Huawei Watch Fit 2 in roughly 90 seconds. Now there are three versions of the Watch Fit 2, the Active Edition, Classic Edition and an Elegant Edition. These versions are mostly the same except for their looks and the case material of the Active Editions. Whereas the front case of the Classic and Elegant Editions are made of aluminium, the front case of the Active Edition is made from a plastic polymer. This also means that the Active Edition is slightly lighter at 26 grams compared to the 30 grams for the other two versions, not taking into account the straps. The Watch Fit 2 comes in a total of 7 colors and depending on the edition you get you can choose from Midnight Black, Sakura Pink, Isle Blue, Nebula Grey, Moon White, Premium Gold and Silver Frost. The straps are also different on each version, but if you want to mainly use it during exercise it's probably best to go with the active version. In terms of sensors the watch comes with an accelerometer, gyroscope, geomagnetic sensor and optical heart rate sensor. Now these are used to measure your heart rate, sleep, steps and oxygen saturation. It can also track your runs and rides with GPS and several other satellite systems. The Watch Fit 2 has a larger screen than its predecessor, the original Watch Fit, going from a 1.64 inch to a 1.74 inch AMOLED colored touchscreen. The watch is water resistant up to 5 atmospheres and the battery life is quite good, with Huawei claiming 10 days of battery life with typical usage and 7 days with heavy usage. However, I suspect most of you that are considering getting this watch will easily fall into the heavy usage category, since if you have sleep tracking enabled and also do some exercises with it each week, you will quickly meet the criteria. The watch also has a speaker and microphone, allowing you to make phone calls and listen to music on the device itself. Finally, I want to be very clear, Huawei let me borrow this sample for the review, but I will send it back to them after I'm done with it, and this video is not sponsored in any way. Now, let's get to the test results. If I had to summarize the results, I would say that the Huawei Watch Fit 2 is great at some things, but also mediocre to even bad at other things. In the end, it really depends on what you're looking for and if you like the form factor of this rectangular watch. Let's start by looking at the thing I like most about the watch, which is its heart rate tracking. I'll show you the results during spinning, cycling and weightlifting. To do that, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the Watch Fit 2 against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. We'll start by looking at the easiest type of exercise for a watch to track, cycling indoors. Now this involves very little movement or tension on my arms and will therefore produce less noise. And here we can see an overview of that accuracy. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement, with on the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the Watch Fit 2. Now the closer the points are to the blue line, the better the agreement, and the darker black the color, the more dots there are. 
As you can see, there's almost perfect agreement between the ECG chest strap and the watch fit too. Almost all points are along the blue line. It's interesting to see that if the watch did make minor mistakes, this was mostly in either really low or really high heart rate ranges, as you can see right here, but also right here. However, overall it's doing great. The correlation, this R value up here, is also really high at 0.99. The correlation value cannot be higher than 1, so 0.99 is really good. That is because the measurements taken with the watch fit 2 were almost identical to those of the chest strap. And here you can see my first interval spinning session. Along the horizontal axis we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red my heart rate according to the Huawei watch fit 2. As you can see, the two lines mostly overlap nicely, to the point where you can basically not see the red line of the Huawei Watch Fit 2 at all. And we see the same thing for this second ride right here, with mostly a super good agreement. So this is starting to look really good. We only see for a moment right here at the end of my training that the watch detected a too high heart rate, but this was only for a moment. However, for most spinning workouts, it's basically perfect, as you can see right here, where there's a perfect overlap between the Watch Fit 2 and the ECG chest strap. There was just one workout that showed a very small issue, which is this one right here, where you can see here in this first period of rest that the Watch Fit 2 did not detect my full dip in heart rate, but the heart rate was temporarily a bit too high. However, overall, this is still very good. However, let's put this into perspective by comparing it to many of the other watches I've tested over the last two years. That overview is displayed right here. The correlation value I was talking about before is the metric I will use for this, and that is displayed along the horizontal axis here. We want that value to be as close to 1 as possible. On the vertical axis, I ordered the watches from worst to best. So the further to the right and the higher a device is, the better its correlation with the reference device. Now here I marked the Watch Fit 2 in red. And as you can see, the Huawei Watch Fit 2 is amongst the better watches when it comes to heart rate accuracy during spinning. It's right up there together with the watches from the Huawei GT3 series and Apple watches. If we now zoom into this graph and get rid of the worst performing watches, we can see that even more clearly. The Watch Fit 2 seems to roughly be as good as the Huawei Watch GT3 Pro and the Huawei Watch GT Runner. It's also mostly at least comparable to the Apple watches, though the Apple watches tend to be even a bit better. Apple watches are about as similar to the ECG device as it can get, since they perform about the same as wearing two ECG devices at the same time. So this really speaks as to the quality of the sensors in the Apple watch, but also to those of the Watch Fit 2, which in part has the same sensors as you will find in the GT3 series of Huawei watches. However, cycling indoors is one of the easiest types of exercises for most watches to track. While cycling outdoors, for instance, watches tend to shift much more on the wrist, making accurate heart rate readings much more difficult. Let's see if this influenced the heart rate accuracy of the Watch Fit 2. Here we see a similar overview plot to before, but now for biking outside. As you can see, there's still a very good agreement between the Watch Fit 2 and the chest strap, though the correlation is slightly lower compared to what we saw before for cycling indoors, with the correlation now being 0.96. This means that the points deviate a bit more from the blue line compared to before, but overall the agreement is still very good compared to many of the other watches I've tested. And we can see why that is based on the individual training sessions. Here we can see one such example training session. Again in blue-green I plotted the data from the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and in red the heart rate data as it was recorded by the Huawei Watch Fit 2. As you can see, the red line mostly follows along nicely with the blue line, meaning that the Watch Fit 2 can mostly track my heart rate very accurately. We do see a few moments where it has very minor delays in picking up quick changes in my heart rate, as you can see for instance right here, but also right here and right here. However, overall the agreement is very good. And this is basically what we see for most training sessions. Sometimes there's a small delay in the Watch Fit 2 picking up a change in my heart rate, as you can see right here for instance. However, this is the only type of mistake it would ever make in any of the 12 cycling workouts that I tested it, which means that it made very few mistakes overall. We can again put this into perspective by looking at many of the watches I've tested over the last years. 
Similar to before, we use the correlation with the ECG chest strap as the value on the horizontal axis, and the better the agreement, the more to the top right the device is. As you can see, the Watch Fit 2, which I marked here in red, again performs about as good as the Huawei Watch GT3 Pro and the Huawei Watch GT Runner. And also, similar to before, only the Apple Watch outperforms the Huawei Watches. So, this is looking really good so far for the Huawei Watch Fit 2. It appears to deliver relatively reliable heart rate tracking for a watch during both indoor and outdoor cycling. However, so far these exercises represent easy and medium heart exercises for a watch to track your heart rate. So let's now move on to one of the most difficult exercises for a watch to track, weightlifting. Here we could start to see a difference between the Huawei Watch Fit 2 on the one side and the more expensive watches of the GT3 series on the other. The Huawei Watch Fit 2 has some of the new sensors that are also in the GT3 series, but it also still has some of the older sensors. I could imagine that if we up the ante and make heart rate tracking more difficult, that the more limited number of these newest sensors could actually hinder the heart rate performance of the Watch Fit 2. However, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Of course, you would also make me really happy and it would help my efforts if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. But of course, that's totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion, let's look at the performance during weightlifting. Here we can see an overview of that accuracy, similar to before, and luckily we still see that most points are along the blue line. The correlation is slightly lower now at 0.94, however this is still looking pretty good. We do see that there are some points below the blue line though, indicating that the watch detected a too low heart rate in these moments, however these are just a few points. And we can see why that is based on the individual training sessions. Again in blue green are the results of the ECG chest strap and in red the results of the watch fit 2. Each peak in heart rate represents a set of exercises I did which caused a brief increase in my heart rate. During this first example session we see that during the first third of the training the watch fit 2 nicely followed along with the chest strap and detected my peaks in heart rate. However, during the second two-thirds or half of the training, it wasn't quite able to follow along. It generally partially detected the peaks, but it did not fully detect them. If we look at some of the other training sessions, we can see that it's generally a mix, with many of the peaks in my heart rate being fully detected. However, for some peaks, the watch is not quite able to capture the full peak in my heart rate, which is also somewhat what we see in this last example I want to show you right here. Interestingly, here we also see it sometimes misses the beginning of a set I did. This is likely very dependent on which specific type of weightlifting I was doing and which part of my arm and wrist was on the tension. We can again put this into perspective by comparing it to many of the other watches I've tested in the past. And we can see those results in this overview right here. Again, the more to the top right, the better the consistency with the ECG chest strap. As you can see, relative to the other watches, the Watch Fit 2, which is marked here in red, performed quite good. It is generally so far a really consistent story over all the different exercises I tested it for, with the Watch Fit 2 doing about as well as the GT3 Pro and the GT Runner, with only the Apple Watches outperforming it. So overall, I'm really satisfied with the heart rate performance of the Huawei Watch Fit 2. It did about as well as the more premium Huawei Watch GT Runner and GT3 Pro. This likely makes it one of the relatively cheapest options to get good heart rate tracking from a watch. However, there are some limitations in the Huawei ecosystem that limit some of the sharing and exporting options, which I'll get back to later at the end of this video. However, if I just limit myself to the heart rate accuracy, I would give the heart rate tracking 5 out of 5 stars, especially considering the relatively low price tag of this device. So the optical heart rate sensor of the Watch Fit 2 is really good at heart rate tracking, but how does it perform at measuring your oxygen saturation, or in other words SpO2, where heart rate is usually recorded using green light, red and infrared light are generally used to track oxygen saturation. To test the oxygen saturation measurements, I did two tests. First of all, I wanted to see if the Watch Fit 2 ever detects a low oxygen saturation value when it's not supposed to. And I did this by taking measurements with the watch when I knew that my SpO2 values were normal. 
After that, as a second test, I took the WatchFit 2 with me into the low oxygen environment of an airplane to see if it would be able to detect a low blood oxygen level. However, let's first look at the results of the first test. Will the WatchFit 2 ever falsely detect a low oxygen level when it's not supposed to? To test that, over the last weeks, I measured my oxygen saturation at ground level in the morning and evening using the WatchFit 2. At the same time, I also recorded my oxygen saturation with a dedicated finger pulse oximeter. At ground level, my oxygen saturation should be in my normal range, which is generally between 97 and 100% and should not fall below roughly 95%. However, when the effective oxygen concentration is much lower, as it is for instance in an airplane, my oxygen saturation can drop to below 90%. Here are the measurements I took at ground level. On the left are 35 measurements taken with the WatchFit 2, and on the right the matching measurements taken with the finger pulse oximeter. On the vertical axis are the SpO2 values, and as you can see, the WatchFit 2 is generally within a normal range of SpO2 values. However, it does occasionally detect values of 94% or lower. In this case, this happened three times. We can see that even more clearly if we display these results as a histogram. In this case, the SpO2 values are along the horizontal axis, and the larger the bar, the more often this value was recorded. As you can see, the WatchFit 2, which is displayed here in red, is in roughly the same range as the finger pulse oximeter in blue for many of the measurements. Often it also quite often detects a bit lower SpO2 values, as you can see in red on the left right here. So this is not looking too bad, though it does appear like the WatchFit 2 sometimes falsely reports low SpO2 values. However, it's probably more important to know if the WatchFit 2 can detect a lowered oxygen saturation. To test that, I took the WatchFit 2 with me on two airplane flights. In the plane, the air pressure in the cabin is decreased during the flight, which effectively lowers the oxygen concentration, which then in turn lowers the oxygen content of my red blood cells. In pink here, I plotted how my oxygen saturation changed during a flight as measured using my dedicated finger pulse oximeter. As you can see, my SpO2 started out normal, then as the plane ascended, my oxygen saturation decreased and it stayed low during the flight, then as we descended, it increased again and got back to normal levels. And here you can see the measurements by the WatchFit 2 in green dots, and it indeed seems that it generally follows along okay with the finger pulse oximeter. The agreement is okay, though there's still a bit of noise in the measurements of the WatchFit 2. The values drop significantly during the flight, and they are closer to normal levels before takeoff and after landing, though especially before takeoff, there are quite a few dips to lower SpO2 values as measured by the WatchFit 2 that should not be there. Still though, the overall patterns of lower values in flight and higher values before flight are visible. Just to put that into perspective, here on the left are the values I measured with the WatchFit 2 at ground level that we were looking at before. If we look at the SpO2 values measured by the WatchFit 2 in flight, which you can see right here, we can indeed see that these are lower than the measurements taken at ground level. Most of the time at ground level, values were between 96 and 99%, whereas in flight they tend to be 93% or lower. To make sure that these results were consistent, I took the watch with me on a second flight. Unfortunately, something went wrong with the recording of my normal reference device, but luckily I did bring another device based on transmittance pulse oximetry. Specifically, I used the O2 ring from Wellu that the company sent for me to potentially test. Now, I still have to test how reliable this device is, but based on the patterns it recorded, we can at least see when the plane ascended and the values went down and when it descended again. There is this weird moment right here in the beginning of the flight where it recorded an increase in my SpO2 and I'm not sure if my SpO2 actually increased. If we now plot the values measured by the WatchFit 2 in the same plot in green, we do see that roughly the patterns are the same. Before takeoff, we have relatively high SpO2 values, which decreased as we ascended and were high again after landing. It also recorded an increase in my SpO2 levels during this period of the flight right here, where also the reference device detected an increase. So this could potentially be a real signal that the O2 ring detected as well. 
overall, I would say that the WatchFit 2 can detect general patterns in SpO2 levels, though it does tend to be a bit noisy. So if you do get a low SpO2 value with the WatchFit 2, I would take several measurements in a row to make sure it's consistently low and afterwards check it with a dedicated SpO2 monitor if possible. But still, based on the testing I've done so far, I'd give the SpO2 measurements of the WatchFit 2 4 out of 5 stars. Next, let's move on to the thing I found the WatchFit 2 to be worst at. And this will not come as a surprise, it is, yes indeed, sleep stage tracking. Like most new Huawei watches, the WatchFit 2 uses the TrueSleep 2.0 technology. So let's see how it performed. To check if the WatchFit 2 can detect my sleep stages, I'll compare it to an EEG device called the Dream 2 that can actually measure my brain waves and has been shown to be relatively reliable at sleep stage tracking. Now here I show an overview of the sleep test results. For getting an overall impression of how well the WatchFit 2 performs, the Dream 2 should likely be good enough. However, the gold standard would be polysomnography, which I would also like to try on the WatchFit 2 in the future. Now on top here are the sleep stages as they were recorded by the EEG device and on the left the sleep stages as recorded by the WatchFit 2. I wore both the EEG device and the WatchFit 2 to bed for 5 nights and we will see how close the predictions of the WatchFit 2 are to those of the EEG device. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 was predicted as each sleep stage by the WatchFit 2. If they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. First of all, we see that 68% of what was deep sleep according to the EEG device was also deep sleep according to the WatchFit 2. Now this percentage is not too bad actually. If deep sleep according to the EEG device was predicted differently by the WatchFit 2, it was mostly predicted as being light sleep. And we can see that better based on the individual nights. And here we see one such example night. On top we have the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 EEG headband with the clock time along the horizontal axis and the sleep stages on the vertical axis. On the bottom we have a similar plot but now for the WatchFit 2. I've highlighted all the EEG recorded deep sleep in purple here. For this first night, we can indeed see that most of the EEG detected deep sleep was also detected as deep sleep by the WatchFit 2. The parts that were detected differently were said to be light sleep by the WatchFit 2. However, you can also see that the WatchFit 2 detected a lot of extra deep sleep throughout the night that the EEG device did not detect. We see mostly the same for this second example night. A lot of the deep sleep detected by the EEG device was also detected by the WatchFit 2. But in this case, the disagreement was mostly with REM sleep. However, again, a lot of extra deep sleep was detected later in the night. Especially near the end here, there's a lot of extra deep sleep. And physiologically, it's actually unlikely I would have had that much deep sleep near the end of my night. So deep sleep detection is a bit mixed, with much of the deep sleep I had according to the EEG being detected, but also a lot of extra deep sleep being detected. If we look at light sleep, we see that the agreement with the EEG device is not very good. Only about 45% of what the EEG device marked as light sleep was also marked as light sleep by the WatchFit 2. A very large percentage, about 35%, was actually predicted as being deep sleep by the WatchFit 2, which is probably where a lot of the extra deep sleep we saw before ended up. Still, quite a bit of it was also detected as being REM sleep by the WatchFit 2 at about 17%. Now REM sleep agreement shows one of the worst agreements with the EEG device, but this is something we've seen before for other watches and also for those from Huawei. In this case, only 29% of what the EEG device marked as REM sleep was also marked as REM sleep by the WatchFit 2. More than double was marked as light sleep instead at about 64%. We can again see why that is based on some example nights. This is a similar plot to before but now with REM sleep as measured by the EEG device marked in red. As you can see, the REM sleep as measured by the WatchFit 2 is more or less randomly distributed throughout the night and it does not show much agreement with the EEG device. We can see the same thing for this second example night. All the REM sleep detected by the WatchFit 2 is clustered in the middle of my night right here, with none of it at the beginning or at the end of the night. Now this is a very unlikely pattern of REM sleep, and it does not match very well with the REM sleep as detected by the EEG device. 
This also means we cannot really see my sleep cycles based on the data from the WatchFit 2. Now you go through roughly four to six sleep cycles each night, each one starting with light and deep sleep marked in blue and each one ending in REM sleep marked in red. As you can see, I likely had one, two, three, four complete sleep cycles this night, though the first two were somewhat interrupted. However, based on the data from the WatchFit 2, you would not be able to see this. Based on the agreement with the EEG device, the awake detection of the WatchFit 2 is also not very good, only showing a 36% agreement. Almost half of the awake detection according to the EEG device was actually detected as being a light sleep by the WatchFit 2. If we look at the individual nights, we see that this is because indeed not all of the awake moments that the EEG device detected were also detected by the WatchFit 2. One example night is displayed right here, where in green I mark the awake moments detected by the EEG headband. And as you can see, two of the awake moments match with the EEG device. However, the main issue is that the WatchFit 2 detected me as waking up later, which meant it marked a period where I was likely awake as me still being asleep. And we see a smaller issue for this second example night right here, where the EEG device detects a short awakening, but the WatchFit 2 detects no awakenings at all during the whole night. To put these results into context, we can compare the performance of the WatchFit 2 to that of many other watches. This graph shows an overview of the agreement of different watches with the EEG device. Along the horizontal axis, we have the average agreement over the four individual sleep stages. And on the vertical axis, we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. Now, the better the agreement, the more to the top right the device is. And as you can see, the best agreeing devices include different Fitbits, Whoop straps, and a Withing Sleep Analyzer. If we now plot the Huawei Watch Fit 2 in the same plot, which is marked in red, we see that its agreement with the EEG device is about the same as that of most other Huawei watches, which makes sense given that they use the same or similar algorithms. It's very close to the original Watch Fit, the GT3, GT Runner, Watch 3 and GT2e. Overall, I wouldn't put too much faith in the exact sleep stages tracked by the Huawei Watch Fit 2. We saw some of the same issues we generally see for all Huawei watches when it comes to sleep stage tracking. Now Huawei does a few things really well, but sleep tracking is definitely not one of them. Therefore overall, I'd give the sleep tracking 2 out of 5 stars. Next, let's take a look at a feature that is also quite important for many people that are buying the WatchFit 2 for sports, namely GPS tracking. To test that, I tracked my route during 10 bike rides while I was cycling to and from work. And I wanted to test two things. One, how long does it take for the watch to get a GPS signal? And two, how well the GPS signals overlap when cycling the same route multiple times? That is displayed right here for five times I cycled back from work. Now I started the activity the moment I was ready to leave and I did not provide the watch with any extra time to acquire the signal. The green marker indicates the moment it connected the GPS signal. And as you can see, it was a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to how quickly the GPS signal was acquired. Twice it was acquired almost instantly, twice it took a bit of time, and one time it took a lot more time to get a GPS signal, as you can see right here. Now generally, once a signal is acquired, the signals overlap quite well, though I wouldn't say amazing. At some moments there is still some deviation, as you can see here for instance, there's quite a big deviation. Though in other moments it's a lot better, like here for instance. For cycling to work, we see mostly the same thing, though for these examples the signal seems to be acquired even more slowly. Again, twice the signal was acquired quite quickly, but the other three times it took quite a bit longer. You can see it was acquired twice right here and one time right here. Interestingly, in all these three cases I was waiting for a traffic light to turn green. Now the overlap between the signals once they are acquired is quite okay, at least for the most part, as you can see right here for instance. Though there are moments with some weird deviation as we can see here for instance. Overall, my impression of the GPS tracking of the WatchFit 2 is that it is okay, though definitely not great. The GPS tracking of Garmin is for instance much better than the one you get here. The WatchFit 2 often needs some extra time to get a signal, and it also sometimes shows some weird deviations, though it's mostly quite okay once it has the signal.
One interesting side note is that Huawei actually uses information provided by, for instance, pedal maps to partially align the raw GPS signal to the street layout with the aim of improving accuracy. But I can't say if this actually improved things. Overall, since the GPS tracking of the Watch Fit 2 is decent but not great, I would give it 2.5 out of 5 stars. The next thing that the Watch Fit 2 was pretty good or okay at is step counting. To test the step counting accuracy of the Watch Fit 2, I went out and took exactly 4000 steps with the Watch Fit 2. Now I do not like counting 4000 steps in my head, which is why I counted each step manually using this tally counter. Let's take a look at those results. Now I actually counted my steps in 4 segments of 1000 steps, switching the tally counter between my left and right hand, which is what the right and left labels refer to here, and I wore the watch fit 2 on my right arm. Now these numbers right here are the actual steps counted for each of the 4 segments by the watch fit 2. As you can see, it was pretty much spot on in counting my steps, and was at most 11 steps off, which is really good. To put that into perspective, here are the steps counted by the Huawei Band 7 and Mi Band 7 I wore at the same time. As you can see, the step counting of all three devices is very similar in terms of accuracy, all being super close to the actual 1000 steps for each of the four segments. Now it's difficult to make any definitive conclusions based on just this test, but the step counting of the Huawei Watch Fit 2 seems to be really accurate, though we still need to test if it counts any steps when it's not supposed to count steps, for instance while cycling or typing. So without knowing that, I preliminarily give the step counting accuracy of the Watch Fit 2 4.5 out of 5 stars. In using the device, I did find that there are some factors that might make the Watch Fit 2 less attractive for some people. The first is that similar to what I showed for the Huawei Watch GT3 Pro is that there's no direct Strava integration, which I think would be amazing to have. On Android, you can use this app called HealthSync to get around that, and I found it to be really helpful, but direct integration is definitely preferred since it can be a bit of a hassle to use third-party apps. The second thing is that the US government also put some restrictions on Huawei's dealings in the US, which has curtailed the use of most Google-owned services and products by Huawei. This does mean that installing some apps or add-ons is slightly more complicated with Huawei watches, which could include having to install Huawei's own app store on your phone. Now in Europe, I haven't really had any major issues using Huawei products, but I've seen some comments from people that seem to have more issues. Now if you know more, also what it's like in the US, let us know in the comments below. In terms of health and sports tracking, there are a lot of things to like about the Huawei Watch Fit 2. Based on my testing, I find that the heart rate tracking is some of the best you can get on Android and only the Apple Watch does ever so slightly better on iOS. Furthermore, the step counting also seems really good and the oxygen saturation sensor also appears to be able to more or less detect when you have a low oxygen saturation, though it is quite a bit noisy and you definitely want to follow up low measurements with a dedicated finger pulse oximeter. Similarly, the GPS tracking is okay, though there are definitely better watches out there for this. And the sleep stage tracking is not something I would rely on. I would only use the total time spent in bed reported by the watch and completely ignore the sleep stages it reports. Before I share my final thoughts, I should mention I recently also made videos on the Mi Band 7 and the Huawei Band 7, which you might also be interested in. But getting back now to the Huawei Watch Fit 2, overall I quite like it. The main downsides are the fact that the Huawei ecosystem is still limiting and that the sleep tracking is not great. However, the heart rate tracking is really good and I also really appreciate the relatively low price tag and good battery life compared to many other smartwatches. Now based on my experience so far, I'd give the watch 4 out of 5 stars overall. Now if you want to buy a Huawei Watch Fit 2, another device or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toothpaste and at the same time support the channel, there are different affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. Now if you care about heart rate tracking, the Watch Fit 2 seems to be a really good choice. However, if you are on iOS, I do think that the Apple Watch is a much more complete smartwatch and it additionally has great heart rate tracking. Also, if you want a more premium heart rate tracker for Android, you could consider getting the Huawei Watch GT3 Pro. Now if you want future updates on the Huawei Watch Fit 2, consider subscribing to the channel. 
If you want to know more on the great heart rate tracking and other capabilities of the Apple Watch, you can find those videos right here. I'll also link the recent reviews I did on other Garmin watches right here. Now I hope this video provided you with some value. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.